Hello everyone, welcome to our latest lesson. Today we're concentrating on the relay uh, technique and we're focusing on baton exchanges. Now, as you've already learned in the videos that I've presented to you today, we always exchange the baton from opposite hands. What we don't want to do is run into the runner in front of us. So we're trying to create room in our lane. So if Amy here is carrying the baton in her left hand, she's giving it to Ethan's right hand. If she's carrying it in her right hand, she's passing it to Ethan's left hand. Now, whenever we carry the baton, look at my technique here for carrying the baton. We carry the baton at the very end of it. This gives a, a greater surface area in which to hand the baton to the next runner. So that's really important. We've talked about running technique before. And we've talked about these short, fast arms. So if you look at me from the side, I've got my elbows bent at 90 degrees and I'm pumping my arms. What we don't ever want to do in the relay is slow down. Too often I watch runners in the relay looking backwards to see the next person coming and they go really, really slowly. The outgoing runner, which is Ethan here, he wants to concentrate on running as fast as possible and not breaking his rhythm. The incoming runner, Amy, she wants to concentrate on running as fast as possible without breaking her rhythm. The incoming runner, Amy, is always responsible for ensuring that the outgoing runner, Ethan, gets the baton. So it's Amy's responsibility to pass that baton. If Amy drops the baton, the rules of the relay state that Amy must pick it up. If Ethan drops the baton, the rules of the relay state that Ethan must pick it up. As you've already learned in your lesson so far, you do not get disqualified in the relay if you drop the baton. That's not a rule and has never ever been the rule of a relay that you get disqualified. Some primary school teacher just added that in at some stage. As long as you don't impede another runner or gain an advantage when you pick it up, you are entitled to pick that baton up. Now, there are three different techniques that we can use when we're doing the relay. Three different exchange techniques. And I'm going to show you all three and we're going to talk about the good things and the bad things about the relay techniques. The first technique that we're going to look at is called the upsweep technique. Now, the upsweep technique is a technique which is very, very safe um, and is one that's traditionally used by French teams when they run the 4 by one relay. Now, the upsweep technique, the outgoing runner has their palm facing backwards with their thumb and their index finger pointing down towards the ground. So Amy, as the incoming runner, should be able to see Ethan's palm of his hand. The incoming runner places the hand, the hand right up so that Amy's fist touches Ethan's palm and the baton is safely in Ethan's hand and Ethan carries on with the baton. Notice how he's got it in that perfect technique. Pass the baton back. Now we're going to have a look at how these guys have a go at passing the baton between them. Okay, in your own time, you two. So they're both pumping their arms. Now. Upon the signal, which is now at this moment in time, Ethan will drop his hand and Amy will pass him the baton. Ethan, can you do that one again? Now, just watching that technique, when Ethan did it last time, he put his hand right back here. Actually, for an upsweep, we want to keep it in nice and close to the body. So let's do that one again. Now. Okay. Now, so good things. This is a safe technique um, in terms of uh, there's no chance of us running out of the box when we use this technique. And the exchange zone is the area in which we have to pass the baton. Things that we need to be aware of though, the athletes get really, really close to each other. So it's not uncommon for the athlete incoming to hit the body, no, to hit the body with the baton and the baton to get dropped. Okay? So that's something that we have to be aware of. That's the downside of the upsweep technique. You get really, really close to each other, you bang into the outgoing runner. Okay? It is a very safe exchange. The next technique that we're going to look at is called the push technique. Now the push technique is the technique that we now use in the relay. All GB squads, all British sprint coaches are taught to use this technique. Now the push technique 
is a fairly safe technique, but you'll notice that the gap between Amy and Ethan has extended. And the reason that it's extended is this arm now comes back with the palm pointing backwards. We've got the extension of the arm here, and Amy's got the baton in the wrong hand. I'll move that way. It's better. <laughs> okay, she's got it in the right hand now. He's going to extend her arm forwards to place the top of the baton in Ethan's hand. And watch what happens when he put, lifts the baton away. He's now got the baton in the right place. Okay, so we're going to look at that one for these two again. Let them do it in their own time. So pump in their arms. Now. One more time. Now. Excellent. So that's the push technique. Now, what are the good things and the bad things about the push technique? Well, the push technique, notice how the distance between the two athletes has got further apart. Now, that means that our timing of our exchange has to be much, much better than the first one where they were really close together. Sometimes, if this runner goes off, at the wrong time, i.e. they go too soon, the danger is they run out the end of the exchange box and they don't get the baton in time. If you don't exchange the baton in the box, you get disqualified in a relay race. It is a safe exchange because Amy is very precise in her action. She's just got to concentrate on doing this and she's got a massive target in front of her that's here, it's pointing back towards her. She can see the whole palm of the hand as she's trying to put the baton in. So it's safe from that point of view. The final exchange that we're going to look at is called the down sweep technique. Now this is one that's favoured by American teams over the years. They have actually now switched to the push technique, the same as the GB squad. But this one is by far the more risk, most risky technique. But the reason that it works is look at the gap between the two athletes. When we started off, this was the gap with the, put, with the up sweep technique. As we got to the down sweep technique, the gaps really extended between the two. Key points on this one. The arm gets fully extended back. The palm faces up towards the sky. The incoming runner holds this Statue of Liberty position and places the baton down into the palm of the hand, straight down. Because we're able to extend that position, it means that potentially this runner has to run less distance in the race. Okay, so we're really stretching. This is what we call a stretch exchange. So we'll have a look at how Amy and Ethan get on with this technique. Okay, so what are the pluses and minuses of this one? First one, this one potentially could be the fastest exchange that we do. This one is the one where actually Amy doesn't need to get as close to Ethan. So this one could be the one that gets us the gold medal. However, this one is the one that can also go very, very wrong. If you're trying to run with your palm up towards the sky, your arm starts wobbling around like this. The incoming runner, if they're not very precise with their actions, and it's far harder to be precise when you're doing something a long way away from your body, could miss the hand. If they miss the hand on the first time, on the first occasion, the chances are this person here is going to run out of their box. So we have to be a little bit cautious with this exchange. Um, I hope that's been helpful for you to understand the difference between the three different techniques. Remember, we push the baton.